everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. I wanna wish you guys a very Merry Christmas, and I also wanna help you out with your Christmas list for the dog lover in your life. All of the products that you see right here are all made in the USA, and they also all universally accept the code Maligator Mom, which makes it very easy for you to remember when you're checking out. So number one is MunsterMilling.com. Now this is the food that I feed my personal dogs. This is an all stages food, which means that even Crisis as a puppy has been on this food since she was eight weeks old. This is a holistic, fully customizable dog food. I highly recommend it. Number two is going to be robertcabral.com. A subscription to his website would make a fantastic gift. I'm someone who consumes a lot of online dog training content and his is truly second to none. Make sure you check it out. Another question I get asked all the time is what kennels do I use? For my personal dogs, it's a no brainer. This is gonna be a gunner kennel. All of my dogs have gunner kennels. I purchased these gunners because not only are they made here in the USA, in fact, right here in Nashville where I live, but they are also the first kennel to ever receive a five-star crash test rating. And last but not least are the collars that my personal dogs wear. These are available from Tactipup.com. They are fully customizable with their name. You can get a handle on them and they have all metal hardware buckle systems with the Cobra buckle made right here in the USA. Definitely check these out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. It is Thursday morning. I am sitting here with my coffee. Um, I got very little sleep. I actually was up really early this morning because I had to take my boys to the airport. Um, they are heading out to Oregon to visit their dad. And so I've been up really early. My eyes are burning. I am so tired. Um, and I have so much to do today. Um, so I thought what I would do for today's video is just do another Q and A. I think that people enjoy that and I have a good time sitting down and answering people's questions. So I've got my, my computer here. Like I've got my questions pulled up. Um, we are just going to kind of sit down and just go through a few of these and see if we can't help you guys out and get you guys some, um, answers, some feedback to your questions. So if you are interested in sitting down, having a little coffee and chitty chatty pity patty time with me, then stay tuned. All right, so this first question comes from YouTube and it says here, for someone who's researched Malinois for a good two years and have met a few, how would you recommend getting a first one? Um, and that's a pretty easy uh, answer. So basically when someone reaches out to me because they're interested in getting their first Malinois, the question is always, where do I begin? Like, wh where do I start? And it's, it's a great question. And I always tell people the same thing. My answer is always the same. And that is to start by finding a trainer. Start by finding a trainer that you like, a trainer that you like, a club that you like. Um, go out and understand what kind of dog you're looking for. Discuss the goals that you have in mind for this dog with your trainer. Because, you know, most most people are not getting a Malinois to just be a pet. So if you're just looking for a, for a pet dog, well, then just go look for a pet Malinois. You know, find a breeder and say, hey, I'm looking for a low drive pet quality Malinois. Like I'll take your wash out from this litter. Um, and that's fine, there's no shame in that, but I'm gonna to speak to you like that's not what you're looking for because that's not what most people are looking for. So you should be able to reach out, <clears throat> excuse me, to a trainer and find a good trainer or a good club who you can have a very candid conversation with and say, hey, I'm interested in detection or tracking or I'm interested in training a personal protection dog or I'm interested in agility. I'm interested in Schutzen. Um, I wanna start French ring. I wanna get into French ring. Whatever your goals may be, you need to have a trainer first and a dog second because that trainer is going to lead you to the right dog. So a lot of people do it the reverse way. A lot of people go out and try to research a breeder the best they can, find a puppy, they get a puppy, and then they're like, okay, now what? Now I need to find a trainer. When you're gonna have a better chance of getting a dog that is well suited to you and your goals, if you start with a trainer first and let your trainer 
point you in the right direction. So that's a great segue into our second question, which also comes from YouTube. And that is, do you have a list of recommended breeders? And um, I do not. Now, I have a list of breeders that, that I do go back to time and time again, um, but I do not share my list. And it's not because I'm trying to be greedy, so just kind of hear me out, because I actually used to. I used to give breeder recommendations. Like a year ago, if you had asked this question, I would have had a few that I would have rattled off for you and we would have moved on from this question. But now things are different. And I'll kind of try to just briefly explain why that is. Um, so my platform has, has grown quite a bit. And I feel like um, it would be inappropriate of me and risky of me to endorse a breeder with my name or my brand. Um, I just don't think that's wise because a puppy is, is a living, breathing being. It's not the same thing as if I was to endorse a pin, right? Oh, I'm like, oh, hey, uh, everybody, the uh, Pinterell Wow BK440 pin is, is a Maligator Mom endorsed pin. Everybody buy this pin. Um, I've had great experiences with this pin, you know, right? Like it's not the same thing because even if I've had a great experience with a breeder, you might have a completely different experience with that breeder. And it's not because of anything that could really be anticipated, but you know, dogs are, are living, breathing beings. And so I've been in an experience before where I purchased a puppy from a very highly recommended breeder to me and had a really terrible experience. And I'll just briefly touch on that. I don't wanna get into it, it's a long story. But this puppy uh, that I purchased from this recommended breeder, and the pairing looked nice, um, died within the first 48 hours of being delivered to me. And long story short, to that day, I have not received a replacement puppy. I've not received any money back. I didn't even receive my money for a flight to have the dog shipped out and then the dog ended up not being shipped the dog was driven um, i didn't even receive my flight money back or any compensation for that and the differences um just a bad situation and and again this was a highly recommended breeder so um you know things can happen things can go wrong and i don't want my name associated or endorsing something I have no control over. I have no control over that person, how they run their business, how they conduct themselves, and I'm just not gonna endorse something that I'm not very, very much a part of. So um, that's why you hear me, I will endorse a trainer because I've had personal experience with a trainer, like I've been working with my personal trainer for years. I'm very involved with her. Um, I know the ins and outs of that business very well, and I have no problem making that recommendation. A breeder is a whole different ball game. So, um, so I guess the short answer to that is no. No, I do not have a list of recommended breeders. So now we're gonna go ahead and skip over here to uh, a Facebook question. And this is from someone who says they have a 10 week old puppy who um, growls, snarls, and snaps at them every time they try to pick her up. So what do they do about that? Um, I feel like this is so normal. So I, I, you know, forgive me if I have like a condescending tone or I, or I come off wrong, but like, this is so normal. This is so normal. This is so typical for a Malinois puppy. Um, that's a very, very young dog. And while, you know, we don't want that, we certainly need to condition the dog out of that response to being picked up. Um, you do have to kind of understand that a relationship with a, with a Malinois is gonna be different than a relationship with a lot of other types of breeds. In fact, I would, I would guess that if you had a golden retriever puppy that was that age and you went to pick up that golden retriever puppy, it probably wouldn't mind at all. Um, Malinois obviously are a little different. And so there are some things that come into play that we should be aware of. The first one being that I think Malinois are a breed that definitely require like a mutual respect of their space. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so what I mean by that is pay attention to that puppy's state of mind. What is the puppy's state of mind when you're picking up the puppy? Um, are you interrupting their sleep? Is that puppy asleep when you go to pick them up? Maybe that reaction is warranted, 
I wouldn't want to be picked up when I'm asleep. I'd probably wake up swinging too. Um, is your puppy chewing on something? Are they resource guarding? So are you picking up that puppy when they're chewing on a bone or chewing on a toy? Um, you know, there's a lot to the picture that I don't have. And so I'm always left trying to make assumptions, but essentially, um, you know, the end result is no, we don't want the puppy, uh, growling and snarling and snapping at you when you go to pick up the puppy. So just be aware of what your puppy is doing and, you know, if the puppy is snarling and, and biting at you when you pick them up because they're playing with a toy, then the puppy shouldn't have those toys out. They have not earned the right to have those toys just yet. Um, if the puppy is asleep when this is happening, well, don't pick your puppy up when they're asleep. Maybe make some noise, wake them up, and then approach them so that they have a chance to open their eyes, get their bearings, see what's going on, and be prepared to be picked up. Um, so that's kind of just a situational thing. However, this is a young dog, so you have plenty of time to correct this issue. And it would start with, uh, I would just get down on the floor with my puppy. I would have some treats in hand and I would just lure my puppy into my lap. I would touch my puppy. I would touch their ears. I would stroke their tail. I would touch their legs and just start counter conditioning, um, you know, that response. So, so every time the puppy is in a good mood or calm or maybe after a training session and they're kind of tuckered out, that's when I would do this exercise. So just spend some time touching your puppy, getting them used to being touched and handled, and don't be the only one doing this. Also have other people in the house do this. Um, and you know, it's a young dog. I'm sure that this will work itself out, you know, within a couple weeks. All right. So now we're going to move over to Instagram. And this is a, a question about a 12 week old Malinois pup. It says she's so wonderful in every way. She learns fast, can be totally savage when she wants to be, but can turn it off when we ask her to. But if I leave her in the kennel and am out of sight for longer than 15 minutes, she freaks out. Uh, there's nothing I can do to get her to calm down. What can I do? Most of the time I leave her kennel door open. She goes in and out freely. And if she gets, and if she gets in trouble, that's where she runs to. She's very comfortable in her kennel. So I don't think it's the kennel. It's just that she can't see me and becomes hysterical. I feel so bad for her. Um, okay. So that's a lot to unpack, but, but bear with me. Let's get through it. Number one. Um, again, this is a very young puppy, so so we can get we can nip this in the butt and get this handled right away. She's what twelve weeks old. Um, so it sounds to me like your puppy's dealing with a little bit of separation anxiety, and you left a clue for me in your very last sentence, which said, "I feel so bad for her." In in all caps, um, don't don't feel so bad for her. She's she's probably having some separation anxiety because maybe you're a personality that kind of is a little overly affectionate, overly mothery to your puppy. Um, maybe you give your puppy attention at the wrong times when she hasn't earned it or deserves it. And so now she's really attached to you. And we also see this a lot right now with puppies because of COVID. A lot of puppies are not getting out as much as they need to. They're not socializing as much as they need to. They're not being exposed environmentally as much as they need to. Um, and so what I would say is this, because I actually dealt with this with a crisis as well, believe it or not. And she would do the same thing. So here's what I would do. Number one, when you put her in her kennel, give her an interactive toy. Give her something to do to occupy her mind while she's in her kennel. Now that can be a Kong filled with peanut butter or a bully stick, whatever it is you feel so inclined to give her. Give her something that's going to keep her mind busy and keep her occupied. Number two, I want you to cover her crate. She doesn't need to see what's going on. So sometimes these young puppies have a hard time turning their brains off when they can see something. A lot of times a dog can can deal with the um, with the audio, they can hear things and be okay, but if they see something and they're visually stimulated, their minds are not gonna be able to, to control that impulse. So go ahead and cover her crate with a sheet or towel or blanket so that she cannot see you moving around in the environment. Um, and then number three, I want you to actually start crating her a lot, okay? Crate her a lot. Crate her so much. Crate her while you are home. Don't just crate her when you go to work or when you run to the store or whatever. It doesn't actually say if you work at home or what your situation is, but um, start crating her more often when you're actually home with her so that she understands that separation. That will actually work wonders. So, um, so good luck with that. 
Okay, uh, moving right along here is another question. Um, this says, my daughter got a Malinois female for her ninth birthday. Um, maybe it's 19th and that's a typo. I would hope, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it says she is cute, good, loves to play and cuddle. She's biting, but that is normal. She's not changed all her teeth yet. She's now five months old. We only have two problems. Oh, that's good, just two. Uh, when the children run, she chases after them, jumps and bites their hand. She does it with my kids, but she runs after other people as soon as they run. Our other problem is that he's chasing cars. Okay, so um, this to me just sounds like a puppy who has way too much freedom of their environment. A five month old puppy is absolutely going to chase your children and run and, and bite at their hands. That is very normal. In fact, my puppy would do the same exact thing. If my daughter was to run through the hallway right now, you would see her. She's actually right here asleep. You guys wanna see her? Isn't she cute? There's crisis. But uh, anyway, if my daughter was to run through the room right now, you would see her get up and chase her and probably kind of go after her a little bit too. Now that is completely normal. Um, so your puppy has way too much freedom. Why is your puppy chasing cars? Why is your puppy being given an opportunity to chase cars? You need to rethink um, how you are letting your dog access the environment and stop setting them up to fail. Because every time they get away with this behavior, it's reinforced that it's okay. So every single time that dog runs after your children and bites at them, it's okay. Every time you give your dog to an opportunity to chase a car and run after a car and they do that, you're reinforcing that that's okay. So um, stop putting them in situations that they're going to fail. So that means that the dog is not allowed to be out around the children right now. You need to teach your children, um, hey, when the puppy is out and we're gonna coexist together for a period of time, there's no running. Tell your children not to run. This isn't always just about the dog. Sometimes this is about teaching our children how to properly engage and interact with our animals as well. And a Malinois definitely needs to have parents who are going to teach the children how to properly interact with the dog like this. <clears throat> so my daughter, for example, knows a lot of things are not allowed when we have the puppy out. So like number one, she knows that she's not gonna go let any of the other dogs out of the crate. Number two, she knows that she's gonna keep her energy even. She's not gonna be running around the house when we have the puppy having their out time. Um, she knows that there are certain toys that she's not gonna to allow to be down on the floor. In fact, she's so good at it now that she'll actually notice if there's like a toy out that the puppy isn't supposed to have and she will go and pick it up and put it in the basket. So this is just about teaching our children how to properly interact with dogs. So you can't just expect a five month old Malinois puppy to not, or to have the impulse control to not chase children running around in the house. That's just not fair. That is not a fair expectation, but you know what is fair? It is fair to tell your children that, hey, the puppy's gonna be out here for 20 or 30 minutes and during that time, you're not allowed to run, okay? So that solves that problem. Your second problem was the dog chasing cars again. Do not put this dog in a situation where they can chase cars. Not only is that really, really dangerous, but again, you're reinforcing that behavior. So it may turn into a thing that if you don't take care of now while the puppy is young, you're gonna be dealing with management for a long time and then having to deal with some issues later that could be a really big problem. So put your puppy on a leash. Don't, put, don't, don't let your puppy get outside where they can chase cars. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just frustrated with that question. So please just, you know, reassess the freedom that you're giving to this dog. Okay, here's another one. This says, uh, I have so many questions for you. I'm thinking about adding a Malinois to my family. My uh, First, my son has autism and I'm looking for a dog that will basically be by his side 24-7. Um, I have to be really careful here how I answer this question. First of all, um, I understand autism very well, actually, because I have two nephews that are both autistic. And so I understand what it is that you're dealing with, at least to some degree. And um, I'm just here to, to try to maybe be the voice of reason for you that a Malinois is not going to make a good service dog or companion for your child, especially because it's a child. 
having nothing to do with the fact that your son is autistic, but because it is a child, your child is not going to be well equipped, especially if there are any additional challenges that your child is dealing with, to be a strong leader for a dog like this. Most children, even if they didn't have challenges at all, would not be well suited for a Malinois. Um, there are many, many, many more suitable breeds that would be a fantastic companion for your son, that would make a great dog for your son. I do not think that a Malinois is a good idea. Even a very low drive Malinois is still a Malinois. Now there might be some unicorns out there. I know people have them. I've seen them. I've met them myself um, where it would, would maybe it would be okay. So there are always exceptions to the rule. But in general, I think this is a terrible idea. I urge against it. And I would ask that you maybe research some other breeds because there are many breeds that are gonna be way better suited for this type of job. So here is a question about um, how the process works with the waiting list if you are on the waiting list for one of my puppies. Um, basically, when you submit that inquiry form, you're automatically added to my waiting list and it's done so because they take a, a date and time stamp. So it's always um, on the waiting list in the order received. Um, I do have a lot of people on that waiting list, but, and, and people are wondering, this person wants to know, when are you doing your next puppy? Um, I'm actually not sure. So here's the thing. Um, when I had three Malinois, taking on a puppy to train and sell was not that big of a deal, right? I could manage that. Well, now I've got my own puppy here, which kind of throws how spring and summer is going to go down as far as if I'm going to take a puppy in this spring or summer to turn around and put through my program and sell. And I am leaning heavily towards no. I am probably not going to do that. And in fact, I don't know when I'm going to do that again. Um, it's hard to say because it really depends. You know, I feel like if I can just speak honestly with you guys and just kind of tell you why, what I'm feeling about that whole thing, I'm just gonna do it. So um, the thing is, is that I feel like when I bring a puppy on board, my dogs, my personal dogs get back burnered. And that's part of my own mental hang up because I feel like I want to work really hard on this puppy and give this puppy the best start for the client that I possibly can. And I have a hard time juggling the time I'm spending and working with my own dogs versus the time and attention I'm pouring into this puppy that I'm training to sell to a client. I have a really hard time with that. It's not something I've been good at managing. And um, you know, maybe in time I'll get better at it. But right now, with with my own little puppy here, right, that I'm that I'm in the middle of raising, um, I don't see myself bringing an, another puppy on board for at least another year. I really need to take some time for my own dogs and start focusing on my own dogs again for a while instead of bringing puppies on board to to train and sell. It's fun. It's really hard to say no because I love Malinois puppies. It's like my thing. It's my niche. I love working with Malinois puppies. They're so smart. They're so wonderful. I have a great time doing it. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I've got to. I've got to prioritize. That's what life is all about. If you want to be successful, you have to have uh, your priorities right. So um, I'm going to just take a step back, I think, from that. I'm not going to give you guys a solid date or time frame as to when I'm going to bring my next puppy. But if you're wondering if it's going to be spring or summer, there, you know, it's, it's a very good chance that it's a no. All right, so here's a question that I really hated to read. Um, but, but let's read it. It's, it's a little bit of a long one, but, but I think the context is important for you guys to understand. So just bear with me while I read it and then I'll kind of let you guys know what I think and what I feel about this. So <clears throat> this says, we have a Malinois and today we had an incident where he bit my neighbor's daughter. He plays with them from the other side of the fence and she wanted to pet him. So I invited her and her mom to our side, but he was focused on what was happening on the other side. We tried everything to get his attention, but he ignored us. And when he was approached by the little girl and mom, he bit her leg, darted, started going in a circle around me and then came back to bite her as her mom was trying to pick her up. 
We managed to get them out of the yard and lock it. Needless to say, it has been a horrible day and I'm not sure why this would happen. I feel betrayed by our dog because he's familiar with the kids, but reacted this way. Please help with any advice you might have. Um, so here we go. Now I do get these questions from time to time about my dog bit somebody. I'm not sure what to do and I'm not sure why it happened. This is something that is not a foreign question to me as someone who deals with Belgian Malinois. And um, unfortunately, you're probably not gonna like my answer, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway, because that's who I am. So I think that your approach in reaching out to me, while I appreciate your trust in my opinion of the situation, is the wrong move. Your dog just bit a child. The last thing that you need to do is be reaching out to people on social media for advice. And I'm not trying to say that to come, to come down on you or belittle you. I'm trying to say that so that you wake the fuck up. Your dog just bit a child and you're on social media asking people on social media for advice. This is woefully inappropriate and a, and a dangerous underreaction to what just happened. Now, I don't know if you took any further steps here, but if you did, you didn't say that you did. This is a dog that you need to go work with a professional trainer with. You need to have this dog in front of a professional who can put eyes on this dog, who can understand what is going on. I have no way of helping you. I have no way of knowing or understanding or diagnosing why the fuck that happened. I am a million miles away from you. You might as well be on the fucking moon with that dog. I have no way to help you. I have no way to understand or contextualize or diagnose what just happened. And so often I get these questions and it's so frustrating and heartbreaking because I know that these people want you know, to do what's best. I know they mean well, obviously they care about their dog and they, they want to try to get it figured out or they wouldn't have even bothered to reach out to me, right? But it's not the way to go. And I just get so frustrated because it's like, your dog just bit someone. Why aren't you on the phone immediately with a professional trainer saying, hey, I have this Belgian Malinois who just bit a child. I don't know why, I don't know what to do I need to schedule an appointment immediately. We need to figure out what's going on with this dog. That's the reaction. The reaction is not to take to your phone or take to social media or text a few people or ask a few people online or go to a forum online or, or anything like that. That's just a woeful underreaction. So please, please reach out to a professional trainer in your area. And even if you have to do a virtual lesson, which I hate to recommend virtual lessons for dogs that have landed a bite or have complex behavioral issues or reactivity issues. I think that virtual lessons are not the answer for those things. But I also understand that some of us are limited geographically to have access to these trainers. So once in a while, you know, in severe cases like this where a dog has landed a bite, if you don't have a trainer in your area, then a virtual lesson is better than nothing. So please reach out to someone who can get you help. But nobody online, through the medium of text is going to be able to help you with this. And if some trainer is out there texting you, telling you that they have the answer and you just need to do this through the medium of, of texting, fuck them. That is bullshit. They do not know. No one could begin to understand this. Um, you've got to get your dog in front of a professional, please. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap. I think we're gonna call it a day. Um, I hope you guys found the information helpful. Uh, please do come back. Please join us every evening because we do have quite a few um, really exciting giveaways coming up. Uh, I'll kind of run down a few of them. I know that we've got another uh, Robert Cabral annual subscription to give away. We've got a Gunner Kennel to give away any size. Uh, we've got the uh, we've got three months worth of Munster food to give away. So uh, three months paid food for your dog. Um, we're going to be doing a, another like Christmas themed giveaway where I'm going to put together a stocking for your dog and I'll ship that out to, to some lucky winner. So, I mean, we still have a lot of great stuff to give away in the days to come. So please do stay tuned. Please do ring the bell so that you get notified every time I upload. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, thanks you guys so much for, for coming along with me for Vlogmas. I know that this is not like my typical content that I put out, but, um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm, I'm having fun making it. There's been a few days where I've been like stressed out a little bit about it. And I, I've complained about it a little bit here and there to my husband and my kids. But you know, overall, I think that this has been a lot of fun and I've actually met quite a few new people to the channel. So if you are new, like, hi, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming. Um, I hope you're entering our giveaways. And uh, I hope you stay tuned even after Vlogmas is over because, um, you know, as we head into the new year, I have some plans for the channel. So hopefully you guys will stick around to see what we have to do in the, in the next year to come. So anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Let's go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.